What's up guys, welcome back, Hat Hair Jando here. Uh, today we are doing a little bit of an interesting video. Uh, I've been combing through a bunch of clips because I kind of wanted to explain why I know how to use silicone and all this other stuff. If you watched the last video, interesting one, controversial, who knows. But, um, so I want to show you guys a project that I originally worked on and this is kind of what got me into silicone and all this other stuff. If you've ever seen the field of soft robotics, if you haven't, your about mind about to be blown. There's this whole entire robotic field uh, built around silicone robots and I thought it was pretty cool so I was giving my own go at it. Let me, I'll show you guys quick what I was, what I was talking about, what I was doing. <laughs> also, side note from editing Jando here, uh, half the clips sound like uh, this. I'm like 87.35% sure of that. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move a voiceover and try to explain to you guys what's going on here. So I'm way too proud of this printer, to be completely honest with you. This is the old boy, the CR10, but I'm printing the original design for the mold right now. This is this is the cross section of the mold that actually goes in and just eye boggling about how nice and tuned I got this printer. But here is the actual print going. Yeah, 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 print quality. This is after I put my printer on cinder blocks and I was so happy. I was like, look at the print quality. Oh my God, no way. I have no idea how much resin this is gonna take. So this is kind of guesswork. I probably could do the math since I have this thing as a 3D model. So I was going through, I uh, definitely should have done the math. Uh, if you passed Jando, what are you doing? What are you, what are you even thinking not doing the math? Oh God. But uh, here I'm going through casting and I'm using mold release, all the stuff that you're supposed to do in casting. I've watched way too many videos on, on the internet about uh, like resin casting and all this other stuff. As uh, this still, but um, we're resin casting this one and this little mold. And I think I explained it a little later. Um, there's a piece of fabric that goes inside the soft robotic itself. Okay, so it's been about an hour. I'm gonna let the rest of the pressure out of this. This there's definitely leak somewhere. I don't know how to make pressure systems, but let's get these off. Let's see if it all destroyed or if it actually worked. Ooh, interesting. This one's yellow. <laughs> um uh um <laughs> Uh, okay. We're back and now we're gonna do this mold right here. I have these little wheels and just to balance it on the dish. But this is the bottom piece. So we cut this piece. Part of this is like this leather material. And what I'm thinking is it's gonna give me a good like stiff back to work with. Uh, and still it's kind of porous so it'll be able to, to like mold with the actual thing. Stretch just like a little bit. Yep, and it turns out I may have picked a good piece of fabric right in the beginning. Okay, the molds and everything has cured, so I don't know why this one turned yellow. Um, yellow chemistry, yellow science is normally bad, but let's see what Shout out fire see explosions out. This is way too satisfying not to have on. That actually came out really well. <laughs> I feel like I'm holding like a jellyfish. <laughs> Look at this thing. Okay, so I don't know if I address this. This thing just, this thing is like, a, like it's like a jellyfish. It's so much fun to just like hold. But let me try to explain a little bit better what's going on here before I uh, mold this in. So this part right here, these little cavities are gonna be filled with air pressure. And in theory will inflate and, and cause this robot to expand on this on this one side. So this side will inflate and these ridges will help it go and then to turn it into a grabber. So then, then the sides of these will go in and grab the, the actual material. So on the inside, I'm putting a sheet of this like half leather, half fabric piece in here to give it a little rigidity. So as this is expanding, this little part stays still and hopefully, uh, I mean, I don't know, this is all this is all Gen 1 first test. Hopefully these will expand with this and it'll hold. And this is gonna be going right here and I'm gonna use another layer of silicon to bond the arm to this part right here. So, be back once that happens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a tiny little hole in the center of this thing. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. Um, with these little flat cutters that if you have a 3D printer you probably have. So a tiny, teeny, tiny little just shink. Avoid putting silicone right in the center and try to evenly just spread it around everything else. I mean, because it is gonna still have to go a little in the center, so. We'll see what happens, and I'm gonna put a little, little like dab around the edge of this. So a quick explanation of what I was doing, I was cutting a little hole in the center for the silicone tube so I can put air actually back into the robot after it starts, uh, it starts working and starts going. So I cut it all up and yeah. All right, this is the moment of truth. I let it dry, I haven't moved in a little bit, but, whoa. <laughs> I 
hear a leak. No, don't leak. Let's try that again. There's a leak somewhere. Oh, it's definitely around the hose. Okay, that's okay. So then I cut up all the rest of the, the parts on the side of the thing, just so it doesn't have all these flaps and things hanging off. And then, and then, and then. Okay, after a bunch of tweaking, it can finally lift something. It's not, it's not pretty, but, 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 it does work. So then at this point, after trying a bunch of different like tape configurations, because the arms itself were popping, they weren't really equal, I decided it is time to move on to Gen 2, and Gen 2 is where this gets actually, actually spicy. Okay, so unfortunately, literally all the audio from these clips were messed up, but this is when I was designing V2 of the actual mold itself. This mold has a lot of, a lot of better features that, that kind of fixed all the other things, and it was kind of a cloning part of the design. It's all for like an industrial one. This is used for like grabbing fruit and all that other stuff, but this is Gen 2 of the mold, made to be like a billion times easier to actually mold and cast. Yeah, I did the whole like fusion thing, yeah. Uh, back to the printers. The printers are printing. I was so happy with how well the CR10 was working during this, and I was like, yeah, yeah, printers go, printers printers go um, but casted like a little like like flat sheet and I kind of used slight like a slight different design with this one same idea I used the whole pressure pot and all that to make the silicone really nice and I'll say this I dialed in the settings on the silicone for this one and the silicone casting on this one actually came out like really 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 nice so I think this is kind of what I figured out how to not make yellow silicone in the second one uh, and just some extra casting for the pads. But you see, this is the thing right here. This is the new design, kind of cloned off that other one, but this design works literally 10 million times better than that first one that's just like the overarching one. And with the piece of that, that solid leather in the back, it lets it actually deform and keep shape. Now, I also was trying some stuff with pneumatics, which I think is coming up in the next clip. Uh, all this like pneumatic systems using solenoids, a little bit of the electrosities to actually do air pressure. Cause the idea was originally to put this on a drone for maybe some kind of long distance remote recovery where you need to grab something soft. So I wanted to have everything running through solenoids and like CO2. Okay, pneumatic systems are a go. This one fills up. And then this one over here, dumps pressure. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's about it. I was so happy with how this worked out. I unfortunately haven't haven't done much with soft robotics uh, in the meantime, but yeah, for the most part, this is this is how soft robotics work. This is my entry into it. It's a crazy cool robotics field that I definitely want to play around with more because I think you can make some really cool robots that can actually interact with humans and people. And this is this is the old lab, the old lab. But that's about it. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, I'm 150% gonna try to get into soft robotics again. There's so many cool things you can do. I had ideas even putting them on drones, doing all this other stuff for recovery. But uh, yeah, video for today. I want, want, to, see, I want to show you guys. But uh, yeah, video 25, day 25, five more to go. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it as always, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye guys.